guys and welcome back to my channel today's video marks the first video in the wigology 101 series i'm so excited that you decided to join us today and if you're new here welcome welcome don't forget to like comment and subscribe i'm going to be showing you guys how to bleach plug and customize your closure like a pro so make sure y'all get ready because we're getting right into it i know that's right baby so of course you need your plastic bowl, your developer, your bleach, you're going to need some foil to put the closure in while it's bleaching, and of course you're going to need your closure. This closure was actually provided by Pro Extensions, which is my company. You can go ahead and check us out on Instagram, the link will be in the description box below. So the first step in making a flawless unit is bleaching your lace, whether it be a frontal or a closure. The most important thing to know when bleaching your laces is that you want to keep the consistency of the concoction very thick so that way it doesn't seep through the lace and get onto the hair. Even though it's fixable, it just gives you more work and it's easier to just get it right the first time. One thing I would say though is if you're a beginner, you should probably measure how much bleach and developer that you're using. That way you don't end up overusing product as in having to pour more product than you really need and having to wash out the rest and just waste it. Even though it's not super expensive, it's not free. So we still want to save our coins. So the first mixture that I made was too liquidy, so I had to pour more powder and make it a little bit thicker. This is how thick your concoction should be. It should not be dripping or oozing. It should just be thick with two C's. Double cheeked up on a Thursday. That's how we need it, okay? <laughs> So now we're going to go ahead and put the bleach onto the closure. When you're doing this, you want to make sure that you start from the back of the closure because as soon as you put that bleach on the lace, it starts processing. The front knots are a lot thinner than the back knots and if you put it on the front, the front will be over bleached by the time you walk, go back to wash it out. So you always want to start from the back and work your way up to the hairline. Another major important rule while applying bleach to your lace is that you want to have a light hand light as a feather it may not look like i'm doing this very lightly but trust me you guys i definitely am ah, that does look kind of rough but trust me i am and it's with good reason if you go too hard on it no matter even if your concoction is thick or thin or whatever it will go through the lace you will push it through the lace so you do not want to have a heavy hand while you're doing this because again it'll give you more work in the end so after you finish putting the bleach on you want to make sure that it covers everywhere even the knots in the very front you want all of that to be covered now this is probably the easiest part in the whole process we're just going to put the closure into the foil just so that the foil helps to the knots reach maximum bleaching capacity and you just get the most out of your product and we'll let that sit for about 30 minutes and we'll come back and wash it out one eternity later as you're letting your hair bleach you also want to make sure that you're checking just so you don't over bleach it because the time that you need to leave bleach on the closure or frontal depends on the hair that you have and how thick those knots are and different companies have different thicknesses of is that a word it is now but different companies have different levels of thickness for their knots so it varies from company to company as you saw in mine earlier mine were very small so it makes it perfect for bleaching and i always get the best results using my hair so when you're washing out the bleach, there's no specific method that you need to do here. Um, however, it is recommended that after washing out your bleach that you want to tone your knots. Now, it's not something that you have to do, but I would definitely recommend it along with a lot of other professional wig makers because the knots can get brassy even though while you're washing it it may not look like it's brassy but eventually down the line there could be some brassiness and just to avoid that before it happens that's why it's recommended to go ahead and tone your knots at once so you don't have to worry about the issue later 
So what I like to do to tell my knots is, of course, I'm going to use the Shimmer Lights um, shampoo. Well, me personally, I use the conditioner only because when I grabbed the bottle, I thought it was the shampoo. But when I got home, I realized that it was the conditioner because the consistency is a lot more liquidy than the shampoo. And for that reason, I don't like to rub it on the lace because it will, it'll turn the knots white. And that's not exactly what I'm going for. I don't want my knots to be white because then it looks ashy. So I would mix it in with some water, some warm water, and just make it like a water dye type of concoction going. You know, you, you guys see what I'm doing. <laughs> and then... I will put the lace inside of the water and let it sit there for some time. Another reason why I prefer the watercolor toning method is because for some reason when I rub the conditioner or shampoo directly on the lace and leave it, let it sit, it will stain the lace and give me a hard time when it's time to wash it out. So I, I just found with this method, I don't have to deal with any of that, yet it still tones the knots just how I want them to be. So after 45 minutes, I came back and I washed out the toner from the closure. And y'all, when I tell you it's nothing but scalp, if you follow these steps, I'm telling you, you're going to have a perfect lace piece every time. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so before we even get into the nitty gritty, I just want to show y'all how flawless this lace came out though. Like, not too. I'm telling y'all, just follow these steps, you're gonna be good. It's a simple one, two, three with a little bit of elbow grease, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, seriously though, not square, nowhere. That's all scout baby, all natural. <laughs> Okay, so now we're about to go into plucking, which is actually not super hard, but it can be a little tricky, especially if you're a beginner. And one thing I would say about it is that it is a little time consuming. Like you can't really rush on plucking, especially if you want to get the most natural looking results. You really have to take your time and be diligent with it. So after you T-pin your frontal or closure down, you're going to go ahead and get your hot comb ready because you will be needing that. So I like to use two different types of tweezers. This one is a flat head tweezer and then this one is an angle head tweezer. Um, when you go in, I like to section off just a little bit in the front. Some people say that they don't like to do this because it creates a line of demarcation, but honestly, if you know what you're doing, you can fix that line. I think it's better for beginners to start off like this because sometimes when you just start plucking right at the hairline, it tends to push the hairline back and make it look like it's balding. So just to be sure that you don't have that problem, it's okay to part off some hair in the front, whether you want baby hairs or not, it's just to be on the safe side. I forgot to mention earlier, but I got these tweezers off of Amazon a while ago, and if I have the link, I will put it in the description box below. So what I'm doing here is obviously plucking. Um, <laughs> when you pluck, it's going to be a lot of plucking, brushing, hot combing, plucking, brushing, hot combing. It's kind of just like the routine that goes. You have to brush out the hair that you've plucked already so you see what it's looking like, and then you hot comb it so it can be flat. If you are a beginner and you're just starting out, I do suggest investing in a hot comb. I got this hot comb from the beauty supply, I believe, and it works just fine for me. There are a lot of hairstylists that sell hot combs on Instagram, and they're like, oh, it gets your, your, you know, your closures or your hair so flat. And it probably does, but I can't afford to pay for a $70 hot comb when I can get it for $20, and it does the same thing. So, with that being said, you can go to the nearest beauty supply store. Even Walmart has them. You can go on Amazon. A lot of places you can get them for cheap, especially if you're just starting out. You don't want to put so much money into tools that, you know, you're just starting to figure out how to use. Yeah. 
So the way that I like to pluck is to go in the pattern of pluck, skip, pluck, skip. I'm sure you've heard of this or seen this with other YouTube videos or other wig um, stylists or lace stylists. They tell you to go in the pattern of pluck, skip, pluck, skip. It's just so that you don't pluck too much in one area and end up making a bald spot or just you don't want it to be over plucked. You want your hairline looking real natural so when your client puts on their lace and they melt it, it just looks flawless. So I'm gonna give y'all some tea. You may have noticed that I like to section off hair across the hairline and pluck behind it a little bit. The reason why I like to do that is because it makes my hairline look uber, uber natural. Like it makes it look so good, you guys. Versus when people just pluck in the front. I don't like how it looks because you can definitely tell the you can see the line of demarcation where they stop plucking. So I like my pluckings to be very uneven because a natural a real hairline is not even. It's not all, you know what I'm saying, like symmetrical. It's very asymmetrical. It's different patterns. It generally just looks different. It doesn't look very like it doesn't look like it's in unison, you know what I mean? So that is why I like to go deeper into the lace and just pluck a little bit more because it gives it more of that natural look. And everybody loves a natural looking hairline, okay? I know that's right. So finally, we're gonna go into making our part. My client wanted a middle part with some baby hairs. As you can see, I got the baby house out already. So we're just about to get straight into parting. So what I like to do for my part is, and I'm not sure if a lot of people do this. Honestly, I didn't even really much have to pluck the part. Like, I know y'all see that scalp, okay? But what I'm doing right now is hot combing just to make sure everything lays flat where I want it to be, that the part's in the middle. Um, the way that I make my wigs, I sew my closure on last. That's just how I do it. That's my style. I know some people like to sew their closures on first and then they sew around it. But I just like to sew my closure on last and sew the bundles on first. Sew the bundles onto the cap first. And then I put the closure on last. So by this point in the process, I had already sewn on the bundles to the cap. So while I was preparing the closure to be sewn on to the cap, I also just went in and prepared it to be styled as well. So that's why I went in and I completely tried to get it real flat and ready just so once I put it on the closure, all I had to do was straighten the bundles and she was going to be ready to go. And don't worry you guys, I will have a video on how to sew on your tracks to your cap after this one. Just stay tuned. Okay, so like I was saying before, I didn't really have to go in and pluck the parting because like I said, scalpiana, but just to make sure that the parting is completely straight, you know what I'm saying, no, no lumps, no bumps, I just went ahead and plucked it. Plus, I like everything to be, you know, quote unquote perfect, so I'm going to make sure that in my eyes everything looks good. So, as you can see, the part was already you know very straight um i just went in and i plucked it some more now this is tea time number two plucking your closure is something that i have recently got onto um like a couple months ago i used to just be like well if you know what i'm saying if it's straight it looks straight it looks good i'm gonna leave it like that but i definitely notice a difference from when you pluck versus when you don't pluck it's not a very major difference but to a trained eye, there is a difference, and I prefer the results of when it is plucked versus when it's not plucked in the middle or in the part. With that being said, pluck your parts, but be very careful not to pluck too wide. You know what? I'm glad I said that because the thing about plucking your parts is you don't want to pluck it from side to side. Just how it was in the video, you want to go up and down the part. If you have a curved part, you want to go curved along the part in a straight line. You do not want to widen your part because that will cause premature shedding. You're going to be two weeks, three weeks into wearing your wig and it's going to be falling apart. Alopecia, okay? And that's not what we're looking for. So, now I am mapping out my baby hairs, which is probably something you don't see people do often. <laughs> but when it comes to closures and people wanting dramatic baby hairs on a closure, especially a 4x4 four four with it being so, you know what I'm saying, we have such limited space. I do like to plan out how I'm going to swoop them before I, I start cutting them just to make sure if I need to add more hair into the swoop or take hair out or you know just to make sure everything fits and it looks even because the my one of my pet, biggest pet peeves 
is when people have a closure or not even just people when I make a closure and the baby hairs make the closure look uneven you just have to know what I'm talking about to know what I'm talking about but that is why I started quote unquote mapping out my baby hairs especially on the closures because when they want dramatic baby hairs honey we gotta do them but we still want the lace to look nice we don't want it to look tacky okay okay so now we're going into laying our baby hairs for this you will need your mousse um i use nairobi mousse i was watching young africana's video and i she i noticed that she was using nairobi and honestly you probably have heard a lot of nairobi like just the name going around it's a very good mousse because it doesn't contain any alcohol in it so when you do glue your lace down or you know what i'm saying you're doing an install or whatever the case may be Nairobi will probably be the best option to use because as far as mousse, mousses go because of its lack of alcohol it makes the lace not to lift back up after you've already glued it down so you just want to get your mousse and just squirt it onto the baby hairs um after you've cut them obviously you put them on the baby hairs and you just lightly very ever so lightly swoop them it's not super tricky but it can be a little difficult because sometimes baby hairs with it like i said being on the lace they don't tend to stay in place how you would want them to but sometimes you can get lucky you could probably just use some more mousse and it'll you know lay it down get some holding spray and it'll lay it down but you just have to swoop it swoop it to your liking figure out how you want them to be swooped if you even want swoops at all sometimes people like those wavy kind of baby hairs but that's more so for like curly hair or like frontals but you can do whatever you want to do i just know she wanted three swoops that's what she told me so i did three swoops i'm probably gonna make a more in-depth video of how to exactly do baby hairs especially when the wig is already on because a lot of my clients always ask about that how do i relay my baby hairs you still do have to have a very light hand when you're swooping baby hairs because if you swoop too hard you're not going to get them how you want and then if and then sometimes if you do get them how you want and you're trying to brush them out and you brush too hard you mess it up so no matter you know what i'm saying what the case is before or after your baby hairs is laid you always want to have a light hand when you're dealing with baby hairs okay but do y'all see that stop playing with her just in my hot comb burnt her lace it's okay though it was just super hot and i left it laying there but do y'all see that naturality like that looks good come on now come on that looks amazing that looks good y'all i'm very proud of myself <laughs> okay so we made it through the first episode of wigology the next episode we're gonna go into is constructing on the sewing machine y'all and that is something that you do not want to miss okay thank you guys for watching so so much i hope this video was informative to y'all and i hope y'all learned something let me know what you think in the comments down below and don't forget to like comment share and most importantly subscribe i love you guys y'all stay safe